Got it for you. Okay. Well, welcome everybody. Um, we have a very good turnout on Zoom and at the Goggle Work for our first photo competition tonight. And I'm extremely excited um, to have our judge, Jonathan, if you want to just wave your hand so we can see you. Hi, everyone. Um, Hope you're okay. Okay. Uh, Jonathan Baines is um, in the UK, outside of uh, London. Uh, Jonathan, and if everyone can please mute um, at this point. Um, uh, Jonathan is a highly skilled reviewer of photography. Uh, he's been a regional organizer for the Royal Photographic Society uh, for five years. He's the judge's secretary for the East Anglican Federation of Photographic Societies of Great Britain. He's an A panel judge, and a um, which involves the um, Royal Photographic Society. Jonathan is a tutor for the Royal Photographic Society and for many online uh, uh, clubs, both in Europe and in North America. He's running all kinds of uh, image processing workshops, of which I'm actually one of his students right now. We're doing 30 plus hours of hard labor with Photoshop and it's it, it's just phenomenal, the teaching. So I would urge everyone to look at Jonathan's website. Just to lay people's fears aside, as I say that, the images were sent to Jonathan, as with all of our judges, totally blinded. He had no idea whose images were whose, uh, both in the image files and in the scoring sheets. And you'll actually see that when um, <laughs> when he sees which images are mine. Um, so he didn't play favorites because he had no idea who was who. Um, the people, uh, the images were all given random numbers and submitted randomly in a, a, that order for Jonathan to then judge and, um, and score. You will see as we go through this, um, I'm not going to announce it, but the scores are will be the second thing that comes up. Um, numbers one through nine. Um, and the scoring sheet will be available on the website um, uh, later this week and in the newsletter with a link. Um, the, the way our judging is, you'll see people getting similar scores. It's up to the judge to then determine how to break those uh, tie scores. And you'll, you'll note that that happens as we go through this. We'll start with Class A um, Nature tonight. Uh, Jonathan, do you have anything to say before you want to um, uh, chime in? If you want well, to just uh, for a minute, or okay, well, uh, just uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, so, thank you for uh, inviting me. This is my second judging of the day. I've just got in from judging uh, in, uh, in 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 Kettering in Northamptonshire in in the UK, and uh, I, I'm out again, sort of doing photography to, to tomorrow. So it's uh, it's uh, completely absorbed in uh, photography in my life. I wish you all the very best of luck uh, this evening. Some great images to, to go through. So Vince, I think we should make a start. Okay. And Jonathan will be speaking to the club in November. So stay tuned for that. I'm going to share my screen now. Um, and um, there should be an image up very true right okay okay now we'll get started um so first image the break the beak yeah the beak uh so uh interesting that we've gone in really close uh on on this which is you know we're in a nature category so i'm expecting to sort of see you know lots of uh wildlife and the environment uh, and here we've just decided to sort of say you know what i'm not going to sort of show you a great big view but i'm going to go in really sort of really close uh, onto this now as vince said that uh, yeah i have seen these before so i'm not judging them as we see it now i'm judging it as i sort of saw it in a color calibrated uh, uh, environment uh, a, a few days a few days ago I did notice with this image that we're just not quite sharp. We've got lots of grain uh, in, in here, and that really just doesn't quite work with a, 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 a nature image. I like the idea that we've just got the eye, and then we've, we've got, we're presenting it almost as a letterbox, aren't we? But uh, the quality of it just goes down in, in some places. But what an interesting character uh, this, uh, uh, th this chap is. And that scored a seven.
Beauty in Nature, Jackie Henney. Yeah, I uh, I found this uh, uh, well a lovely image as 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 we sort of initially look at this, and I try to look at images overall uh, to start with, and then sort of start to you know sort of look into uh, uh, you know uh, parts. The uh, the butterfly we've caught that, and that is sharp, and that's that's super because that's not that that's not easy to, to do on the wings, but the body just isn't quite sharp. And then when we look at the we look at the lily the uh, Petal coming towards us, it's it's quite large, you know, it's big in frame, it's the closest thing to us, and it's not sharp and it, it you know it's out of focus. So we've got that distraction bef before we go in the center of the flower, uh, blocking the view of uh, uh, of the butterfly. But I do like this idea of the stem coming up from this bottom right hand corner. It gives a nature image, this very sort of pictorial look. And green is a very difficult color to to, to manage in uh in our in our processing but you've really made sure that this green looks very very natural that's a six frozen pond at sunrise by clay myers well i have to say that this this frozen pond it's it's difficult to scale it isn't it i've got absolutely nothing in in my view to, you know, if I've got a tiny person out there or, you know, may, maybe I, you know, I, I, I could have a, a you know, a, an empty Diet Coke can or something floating on it. I've got no idea, but I can't scale it. Uh, and this, you know, becomes almost a, an abstract to, to some degree because I wouldn't have really known that was a frozen pond. But now I do because of, of the title. Well, I have to sort of say, look at those colours. They are wonderful. That was blue. And I'm sure that once I sort of see that and I, and I understand it's a frozen pond, I've got in my, I've got a very, uh, you know, vivid imagination, but I'm sure we've got like a, almost like a circle of footprints going around there. And that's, you know, that's just how it looks to me, you know, may or may not be, uh, that may or may not be the case. Uh, but I just love that the idea that that, that that could be uh, something like that. And I just sort of point those out, but you know, that could be a footprint there, couldn't it? And that could be, you know, a footprint there. You sort of, uh, sort of see how, how it, how it could how it could work and then we've got this splash of gold and they're almost like trees going through it uh, yeah very interesting image and a wonderful sort of use of light in this and that scores an eight ginkgo glory by ellen zimmerman well i think the color is what i'm drawn to in, in this uh in the in this image this is almost sort of a real sea of uh, of yellows and it just warms you up and makes you sort of feel of sort of spring about to uh, about to happen we've got depth of field here with sort of some of the uh, leaf in focus some is is diffused at, at, at the background and i like that sort of separation i think that gives us a you know a sense of depth into the image the branch here is just a bit large it feels dominant it just feels large in frame but i do find some of this background just that little bit distracting those blue parts as they pop through uh the the the, the, the back there and, and the light particularly uh towards uh towards the top, top area uh that i just sort of find too much of a distraction. I'm sort of looking at areas really up at, at the sort of top here. These very, very bright, uh, these very bright areas. Just that little bit sort of distracting. That scores a six. Reflection, Lee Reeves. Well, this uh, I, looks to me like a double exposure and uh, so sort of multiple exposure, as we sort of tend to call it uh, these days, don't we? Because it's usually quite often more than two. But I get a feeling of, of two exposures where the camera is the correct way up and then sort of turned over and, and a second way up. Or it's just a reflection on water, uh, as, as we sort of say. So, you know, are we trying to fool the judge or is it just a straight reflection? No idea. But I do uh, think that the leaf coming up, the the, the trunks of, of the trees really works, doesn't it? It looks like sort of shingles uh, sort of being nailed to, to 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 the tree, so it makes it look very very different to uh, to what you uh, expect. I do find a little bit disturbing, and what made me sort of say it could be a, a a double exposure is the grass at the top appears to be growing downwards, 
uh, and that I just sort of find well, it just doesn't sort of quite make sense uh, for me. So if it was a reflection, I'd almost like expect it to be uh, just sort of uh, you know the other the the other way, like the leaf floating in the top uh, right hand corner uh, uh, too. But I think an image like this, you know, if you're going closer, you might get more uh, more of an image. I just think you're sort of showing us too much. So you know, so don't work too hard. Go smaller. I think you might improve that. But it's an interesting one. That scores a six. The bees squeeze, Tim Huey. Yeah, I, uh, I, I, I think when when I first when when I first sort of saw this, you think, oh wow, you know, we've 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 got the we've got the you know this bee, and I do have to say we've got in close, haven't we? We've got lots of detail in this, you know, particularly around the head. We've we've, we've you know we've we've got some. Uh, uh, I don't know, whatever we call that's not quite fur is it but whatever we call the you know what what bees are made of but uh, that's got some great texture in that but i did find that lots of this is it's it's very very busy so we're fighting with the plant and and the and the head of the flower we've got lots of that ahead of the bee and we, you know we can't go in there and do a bit of gardening can we just to, to move it but there's very little actually in focus we've just got a part of the the head on the right and 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 the wing and everything else uh, is is quite soft. The, the 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 furthest wing, we've then got to a very sort of dark part in the bottom uh, bottom right hand corner. So it really just sort of took away from what could be a much more sort of powerful image. We're not quite at the viewpoint uh, either where we where we need to be. Just that sort of slightly bit lower down, I think uh, I, I think would Im Im improve it. But it's a good it's a good attempt. It's just not quite sort of uh, just not quite there. Five. Cactus detail, Ivan Bob. Yeah, so uh, well, cactus detail. It was, it was difficult to, uh, to to actually really understand this as, as an image. I guess we've gone in really, really close with the word uh, such as detail, and and that's uh, you know that's what I believe uh, where where we are. So we we're seeing something that almost could not be sort of seen with the naked uh, with with the naked eye. We've taken this into monochrome, and I think that sort of shows us shape and texture. It doesn't really sort of show us an understanding of this as as a piece of as a piece of nature because it sort of takes away that natural color. So you know, we, it, it takes away some of, of our uh, of our un, of our understanding. I found again uh, very little in, uh, in in focus, and 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 therefore I couldn't really sort of quite uh, understand. Than the image, so not one of the stronger ones tonight, and that scores a four. Bright eyes, Bob Growth, and this. Yeah, I found this. Uh, I found this a really sort of super image, absolutely sort of super image. I uh, I think if we look at it as an initial impact, then it gives us that scariness, doesn't it? We've got the head. Uh, you know, side on to us, but that you know, with a uh, with a beastie like this snake, makes the eye absolutely drill into us and 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 i guess wherever you are you know sat at home or or or, or sat in at, at the uh you know at the venue you know the eyes sort of looking sort of absolutely sort of straight at you the texture down the side of the uh, of the shall we say face the head look at the detail in that beautiful sort of uh, uh color too we've caught this you know as it, as it really naturally is by color i mean you know we've we've got that white balance uh correct Pictorially as well, we've added something in that we've got this uh, uh, this this looks like a spruce that we're in uh, on the left hand side that gives us this sort of solid piece uh, on 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 the on the left, so it holds us in. Uh, and then there's just a little bit out of focus uh, at, at the bottom, and I like that in images like this because it makes it sort of feel gives me some safety. I'm hiding behind that uh, with the camera. Uh, so it gives it sort of some depth uh, into it, and if we look at sort of some of the uh, of the, uh, and I'm going to call it a spruce if it is if it is or not, but uh, if if we look at sort of some of this, this bit here, it almost is the, some of the yellows in there are the same tone as the uh, as the snake, and it also runs along the line of the snake. It really blends into its nature. And say that was nine in first place. Tiny and shiny, Jenny Lodge. 
Oh, it really is, isn't it? Look at the gloss uh, on, on, on that. You know, now we often say with nature, our word, it, it, nature blends in. Uh, but in this case, we really don't, do we? We, we, we don't blend in at all. Uh, we've got this really bright pop of, uh, of yellow, which with, with them with these black spots on there, that sort of sounds a little bit of danger, doesn't it? Or don't eat me with all those... Uh, all those spots on it. And then this rather, you know, ooh, ugly looking head. I have to sort of say, it looks like he's wearing a, a, an orange helmet. It's, oh, you know, it, it's not an animal that I really would want as a pet. <laughs> that, put it put it that way. But we've got this glossiness. I like that, this turn around as it as it forms around uh, the leaf. And then the, the other leaves we've got, uh, the supports, and it looks almost like the sort of shape of, of one of those leaves. And I think you've caught that in the, and like the environment we've got around it uh, being darkened down. Wonderful piece of photography. That was an eight. Do have passion, Vince Pellegrini. <laughs> Yeah, I I really I really en enjoyed this. You know, it's a simple shot of, of a flower and sort of something that you know is easily taken. The flower's not going to run away. I think if you uh, if you take that centre of, of of the uh, of the flower out, um, it looks like a gas burner. You know, and, and that's that, that I, I was drawn to that. You know, and I just sort of thought, wow, look at that ring of uh, almost like ring of gas sort of burning burning away. And then, of course, you realise it's a, it's it's a coloration of, of the petals and this difference in focus, this sharpness at the front and then softness at the back. Uh, I thought that worked. I thought that worked really well. You know, it was a wonderful sort of uh, uh, picture. It makes it sort of very very sort of artistic. If anything to improve this, I would just sort of say just lift up that light a little bit, get a little bit of light on on the on the stem and in the center there, and I sort of think that would help it really pop out. Super shot eight. Parrot tulip. Julie Stauffer. Yeah, this, uh, I, I, you know, I think you can initially look at this and just sort of say, wow, that's, uh, that's, that's really busy, isn't it? There's lots of sort of things there. But I just sort of think it, it really flowed, uh, really flowed very well. I was very much drawn to the, uh, to the sort of shape and the texture and the frilliness of the edges of these, uh, of, of these petals. And, you know, with it being a, a you know, a, a parrot tulip, we've got, you know, we really do have those parrot colours, don't we? Particularly in the yellows and then those aqua colours into the blues and how they sort of fit with the oranges, uh, some purpley magentas there. And I just sort of felt this sort of soft overlaying was a very, very uh, attractive uh, picture. And you, what you've done is, uh, you know, removed any distraction we could possibly have by placing it on this uh, on this uh, black background. So very enjoyable image. And that was an eight. Autumn maple leaf. Play my well, it. It's a great subject is uh, is a leaf because it has sort of you know sort of texture and detail and I like this one being broken away and it, you know it's got it's got trapped uh, and it's a great nature shot for that it sort of shows you know that it's 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 on its way to sort of traveling down to earth but it's not it's not quite uh, got there but the light here just wasn't working for you uh, on this uh, on on this day because we've got too strong a light actually on the leaf itself and that's not allowed Allowed us to really bring out uh, the veins and, and and the detail in in that leaf, and that is such a shame because you know that is what the picture will be well held on the on the on the on, on the darkness of the sky in the background. You've managed to sort of really bring that difference in luminosity between the front and back. So well done on that. That's a six. Gentle beauty, Tom Story. Yeah, again, I, I sort of found this one um, initially. I think when you when you look at that, you think, oh wow, that's a that's a that's a, a super image of of certainly of the of the head of that. Look at that, and the you know that uh, you know those great big boggly eyes and, uh, and 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 those multiple legs just just hanging in there. And then I just sort of think the 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 the, the, the wings coming up. The one in the in the back in the in 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 that in the distance there, it's left wing. Um, that is really really wonderful on this on this right hand hedge but we just don't quite have the depth of field here uh, and we sort of soon start to go off into softness in in, in the background of the animal uh, and like the antennae coming towards us I just, again just find that a little bit sort of uh, uh, distracting the balance between the two corners of, of the image works really well that we've got the uh, the butterfly wings in the top left 
and then the flower in in the bottom right and that balances very very well well held again on that sort of darkness of the background that's great it's a lovely detail on the head just needs a little bit more detail and when we're going to crop like this um it's just well, we just feel that we've nipped those uh, th those wings is it a little bit more room around it could we have that if not maybe we should just look at just coming in a little bit sort of tighter that's a seven a glow ellen zimmerman honorable mention yeah i really like this i i, I just i i thought it just took a moment when i looked at it for my eyes to settle it's not an instant impact image uh you do just need to sort of sit with it a moment uh, and then just uh i think it just takes me to a place i, I don't know what place that is but it, I, you know i sort of start to feel this it's a very strong uh communication uh um uh, image uh, so it's sort of something that that you know you you you'd like me to sort of print and and place somewhere and and, and look at this it it, it feels of, of sort of summer and warmth but maybe evening or morning warmth or something like that because i you know the 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 bokeh lights in in the background that for me is, it just sort of tells me of shimmering water and these grasses just by the water some are diffused some are sharp they got really random there's nowhere for your eye to really settle but that's you know that's that that's okay. If anything, oh, the reason why it didn't score the top marks was it's just a little bit dark in this bottom right-hand corner, uh, particularly. I think an even light over it would have improved it, but it's a great artistic shot. And it's an eight with an honourable mention, as Vince said. The snow melt, Karen Lay. Yeah, I, 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 I thought this was a, a, a really a, a, talk about getting the decisive moment. We've, we've got this, uh, this, this little branch or little twig or whatever we wanted to call this, with, with, with the snow just sort of seated in there, uh, and you can sort of see that it's not, it's not freshly landed, as it? it's sort of starting to clear at the edges. So therefore, we can sort of see that it's thawing, that it's thawing out. The branch is. Uh, it is wet. The quality of the photography is certainly better on the left-hand side than the right. So if we look a bit, you know, just where the, the U uh, sort of starts to sort of turn upwards, that the, that the snow just goes out of focus. And I think I would have just lost that. You know, maybe I think we could have afforded to crop that off because the left side, we can sort of see every sort of piece of, uh, of snow in there, every little bit of ice. But then, of course, we've got that drip just coming off the bottom it's great isn't it it's like a, oh, it's almost like beads coming coming down and then that huge glob a globule of of of, uh, of water just at the bottom that was a super bit that was seven pausing on purple jenny lodge yeah, I think uh, um, I, 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 I think I first questioned is is you know do we need that much uh, that much of the flower in there? But I understand where the photographer is coming from by leaving this second part in that we can sort of see a a, a flower that's unopened, you know. So it's, it's before because if we crop, we oh it's going to be difficult to sort of remove that, isn't it? If you're going uh, much tighter, but our butterfly uh, is 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 in there, sort of hanging uh, really over from the left hand side, allows us to throw the the plant over the flower head over to the right, and then it's filled in uh, in the bottom left with with the other flower. So again, it gives it more of a pictorial removing from uh, away from 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 nature. Beautiful background in this, that really sort of soft, diffused look uh, is, is, uh, is, 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 is really good. Light is a little bit harsh uh, on this. It's a, just that bit bright on the subject itself, but it's an eight. Nature's Beauty, Ivan Bubb. Yeah, so again, you know, we've got an, another butterfly. It's great, isn't it? How we sort of see these on on on, on purple, attra attracted to these very bright colours, aren't they? The eye of the butterfly here, I sort of found. Ooh, look at that! It's it's like eyes within uh, eyes within eyes. Uh, we just again, just a bit sort of soft on that on that lead wing, sort of coming towards us. It's just a little bit sort of soft there, bit bright in the in, in in the flower. But I like that image of where we're coming from. This bottom left, it leads us sort of through. And it allows that give it, it allows us to give that a little bit more sort of space around the uh, the butterfly. You know, it fills uh, the uh, the square crop uh, m much stronger. 
Greens, difficult to handle in the background. We're going a little bit, what I would call bottle green, a bit bluey green. Uh, so it just looks a bit hard in the background. Just soften that down a little bit, I think would, uh, I think would, 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 Im would improve it. Lovely composition, seven. Eagle by Leon Fox. Yeah, look at the talons on 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 that. It's, uh, I think we've just picked something up there. Maybe you know, I don't know. It's sort of, it doesn't it doesn't look like we've got a fish, but we've got sort of something in that uh, in that in that left claw there. Uh, great spread of, of of the wings. I like that we've got the base. Uh, we've got some base in here, and we're not all sky. It gives me that sort of sense of just swooping down, and I think that adds uh, a, a, another level into into the image. But it's such a shame here that that we've got. The, the bird is actually past us so it's not passing and it's all it's not coming towards us it's already gone past so it's flying away from us uh by, by the looks it's flying towards the sort of 10 o'clock mark uh, and that's a you know that's that that's a, that sort of takes away from the from the image uh a, a somewhat lovely light on the underside lovely detail on the other side of that uh that lead wing uh, uh coming coming towards us uh, and that scores a seven the kiss Bob Gross. Yeah, well, it, maybe it is a kiss, but I certainly wouldn't want to be kissing it. Um, the the, the beastie or the or, or, or the flower. Again, I, I I I love this iridescent sort of feel to this, particularly on the centre part of the body. It's a little bright. We're losing some detail in the on the on the abdomen. That's uh, that's sort of certainly going, but that central part and that where that wing joins in. That's lovely, isn't it? And that wing comes down a little bit of separation from uh, from the body, and that almost parallel to the bottom of, of the image so you know i think that's uh, that's great again it's another one of those images just needs a little bit more sort of depth we've got some soft parts into it and then with a nature image like this you know with softer head with this 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 leg that's closest to us and we soft furthest away so a bit more depth would make a much much stronger image but i love the color palette in this one super seven codes scowl by tim Huey. Yeah, well, toads do one of two things. They're either really smiley or they're really not. It's a, it, it, it's 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 as simple uh, it, it's as simple as that. So we've got this. Uh, the, you know, we can sort of see the nose and the, uh, the, the, the this nostril and then this eye. Look how similar they look. You know, it's uh, unusual that, isn't it? And we're drawn into this uh, into the eye, but actually the eye is quite small in the frame. Now we've gone in really close. Uh, and 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 I think if we're going to go in close, uh, we, we we I would sort of say if we're going to go in close, go in a little bit closer. Just take that nostril and the eye and that relationship between them. But we've got lots of other parts, uh, lots of other parts of it, and it just looks a bit messy here. We've taken this into monochrome, so we draw more into the texture and the shape. Uh, and I actually think the natural colour of the uh, of the toad would have improved it. We've got some. Almost like debris. I don't. I don't know if it's on on glass or something like that. It looks like we're looking through something to actually sort of see uh, the toad. But there's lots of other things around, and I think they're quite distracting just by the uh, the uh, by the mouth and on that lip uh, on 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 the right hand side. So not one of the stronger ones tonight. And that's a five. Whispers of pink, Mia Karen. Yeah, well, it's all about this this small part of the sort of stamen just coming up and just going climbing over that petal, isn't it? And then to, and then it's coming down, and then those green tips uh, uh, just there. I think that's what the image is about. These soft, wonderful sort of soft uh, 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 pinks. We've got very little of this uh, in focus, you know, very very little. Uh, and I think if we if we if we look at what's in focus, there's just this tip uh, of, of of the um, of that of that of this petal and then of course our main feature here just on the right hand side with those green edges and everything else is soft now that's absolutely fine but i would sort of say do we need all of that you know is there a much more sort of simple crop in this image you know is something where we could just crop maybe our main feature and just leave some of this in the top you know is that a, a, a could we improve that just by looking at this image differently? And I think we could, because I think you underneath you've got a good base image. I just don't think it's presented in the best way it could be. Six. Unexpected gift, Jackie Henney. 
Yeah, I found this uh, a lovely image. Again, you know, we sort of talk about uh, about the brightness and 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 the colours. It's almost like it, it sort of softened down, sort of somewhere in colour, uh, and I think that's dealt with the background, uh, you know, uh, very very well. Uh, but it's the idea of we've got a small uh, B here, uh, and then we've got you know sort of something smaller on that, and it's this scale difference. I just found you know absolutely in, in, intriguing. And look at the um, look at the color of the wings they're like a rose color a uh, rose pink on, on on the wings and now that matches into the pinks of, of of the flowers again it's not a true nature image as we call it it's not sort of defining the, the species but we've got lots of detail uh, in this these speckles on the back of the of pollen on, on the back of the bee the detail in the flower in the bottom yeah i thought it was a strong image that's an eight Power within Vince Pellegrini third place. Yeah, I thought this was uh, this was a great shot. Um, uh, power within. I think this is it, it. It looks a little bit scary, if anything does does this because you know do you want to be this this close to the water? But you know maybe it's on a, a long lens. Uh, now we we can make sense of this in in the bottom with the waves coming through and the water there. But as we go climb up into the wave where is that light coming from uh, within and that gives it a different sort of feeling doesn't it the, the, this it, you know we're drawn into the light so it's a danger it's a story and then it's capped at the top with just this little bit of foam dropping around here there and in, in one or two places so i just found the whole color palette of this uh, and where the light is coming from unusual yet it really really drew it really drew me in the one thing that i just wish i'd not seen was was just this small part at the bottom there's just a little bit of light right in the bottom in in the in the center and i just like oh if we could have just removed that i think that would have really helped it score an extra mark it's an eight as it stands compost julie stoffer yeah well i think this is a, a really a, a recorded uh, a recorded shot of uh, of something that has you know is composting is composting down let's hope it's not a human being uh, who knows um but uh, you know, I guess we've got an animal here that's uh, that that's passed and 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 is now just uh, has decomposed there, and and, and just gone in into the uh, into the ground. I think when I first look at this, I, I just sort of think, well, it, it looks like there's more than one exposure in in, in here, and that's because sort of some of it is quite faint. Um, I can sort of think I can see a skull in this sort of towards the bottom right. Um, but it's underneath it's underneath the ribs and then some of the leaf seems to be overlaid on top of each other and i think we've got a busy image and i think that is making it uh, even uh, even 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 busier <clears throat> there's an image for me that just didn't didn't quite work yes we've got the, you know we we we've recorded something that we've got the, the bones there but it uh, it's as I say it's an image that just didn't really sort of communicate with me well and that's a 3 winging it yeah, yeah, unusual, uh, unusual uh, 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 composition or crop uh, that we've got uh, we've got for the, for this bird. It's really all about that wing, isn't it? Um, I find it uncomfortable looking at it from this from this viewpoint. Uh, we've got this head really coming out of the corner, and that is you know, say quite uh, it, it's it, it's quite awkward. But the light in that in that, in that wing or coming on the underside of that wing is is really really beautiful. And I do think that a different presentation of this uh, may have improved it. Some something I'm not quite sure, but sort of something without without that head. Also, look, remember this on the on the uh, on the on the true uh, uh, preview that there was sort of just some colours uh, that looked a, looked a bit a little just a little bit odd uh, just around the edges. There's one or two sort of uh, odd colours around the edges of these tips of of these uh, of, of of the wings. And certainly around the head here, uh, there's just a few little bits of haloing. So, you know, one or two, or two technical errors uh, in, in there too. It's just been pushed on those sliders, I think, a little bit sort of too much. That's a five. Into the wood, Tom Story. This got second place. Yeah, I thought this was a really beautiful, really beautiful shot. It, it, it's one of those where you you can just stand here and actually feel the cold. 
Uh, it it does look uh, it does look cold, and you might you know th there's an argument there. Well, do you know what that snow is slightly blue, uh, and I guess it is, and and I think that that actually adds into the feeling uh, uh, for me. I love the mist in the background, you know, and those really sort of vertical trees. You know, they 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 they're absolutely straight, aren't they? Like telegraph poles, you know, they 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 really just gives it a get it an eerie sort of feeling, and then that inky black water just you know wanders sort of through and off down we can sort of see that follow it all the way around it takes you almost out of that sort of top uh top right hand corner and then it's got this frilly edge uh, around it with you know with the growth of uh, the growth of uh, you know the, of, of uh, vegetation and then sort of snow and frost built up on that so i think it i think it uh, came over really really well gives you a good sort of feeling of of, of, of being there as i say it was nine and second place super shot Ready for battle, Bill Coughlin. Yeah, again, I thought this was another one of those where I think you initially think, wow, you know, it's a, it's a real impact shot, something again you can't sort of see uh, with the with the human eye. Uh, but it's it's all about those black goggles on either side, isn't it? Those uh, uh, th those those eyes. You know, you can you can you can almost sort of feel the texture as you look at it uh, on, on those and that sort of matty but sort of sheen uh, you know it's like a, a velvet sort of uh, a vinyl -y sort of uh, uh, touch to them you know we can uh, and i think that's the bit the, the real sort of strength of this but the, uh, the the sort of center of, of of the beastie there its mouth again it's just not sharp we just lack in depth of field in the in the whole image uh, you know it's so bright in sort of some areas and and then the the you know the 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 the, the, um, the focal point the focal plane is so shallow that you know most of it is uh, is 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 out of um, is out of focus that's a real shame uh, about that uh, that was a 7 catching rain Mia Karen. Yeah, uh, lo lovely shot uh, here of uh, of catching of of catching rain and the uh, little sort of globules of uh, of water. They become almost like little metallic balls, don't they? Uh, that's the little glass beads is what they what they turn uh, what what they turn uh, into. Uh, uh, and I I just sort of found this a, a really again a, a, like a, a sort of quite a soothing, refreshing uh, shot. We've got these layers of the of the browns of the of, of the grasses, and then they're weighed down with with all this uh, all this water on them. Uh, and now sort of some of these small glass balls have almost like pool, have pooled into each other uh, to make some uh, larger ones. Again, it's another one where the eye doesn't really settle, but there's lots going on, and it's, it becomes a, it turns itself into a really a wonderful picture. And that was an eight. After the rain, Debbie Lewinson. Yeah, well, this sort of uh, translucent little beastie that uh, that we've got there, hanging uh, really literally hanging by the thread, uh, you know, on on this uh, very sort of uh, fragile uh, uh, web, and I I, I thought that was uh, that's a you know a good shot uh, to to be able to sort of get the you know the water uh, on 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 to that. Uh, but the, uh, I found this image struggled a little bit, sort of uh, again, sort of technically. There's some uh, some movement uh, in 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 some parts, uh, and it just feels that the whole thing is a little bit. I'm going to use a word crispy, but it just sort of feels that on some of these legs, uh, certainly around around here, that uh, we've certainly lost uh, you know quite a bit of, uh, of of detail in them. So the contrast is too much in there. Colours in it, I'd love to say, were great. That's a seven. Burn by Debbie Lewinson. I really like the idea of this, uh, of taking almost a, it feels like a, almost like studio shot of, of a phone and just sort of taking a piece and put it on some black acetate or something and, 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 and doing a shot and bringing out the sort of richness of that, uh, of the color and, and, and the texture. So I think it's a great idea. I don't think we've executed it as well as, 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 as it, as it could be certainly on the, on the file that I looked at we've really lost detail in, and you can sort of see it really in these in these edges uh, around here it just feels that it's pulling apart and it's quite crusty on those on and crispy on those edges uh, as well it, so it just feels that the it's um, you know like overcropped in a way there, there aren't enough pixels in it and that's how, how how it feels but it's a wonderful shape wonderful uh, color and great te textures in it but again it's something you can retake and that's a four
And that's the end of class A nature. We'll go to class B nature. They were excellent critiques, Jonathan. Thank you. Um, and this is, um, let me just get this off. Cilia uh, by Brett uh, Hartkoff. This got second place. Yeah, I uh, I just I, uh, I was drawn into in, into this just by uh, uh, the the fact that we've got uh, again almost nothing uh, sharp, but just those those heads of those small uh, grasses. Everything else being uh, soft, and again, it gives, gives it a very sort of dreamy look to it, and the complementary use of colours here and those greens just a few little greens just to break up those very rich uh, coppery browns uh, and you know say just one or two bits uh, in, in focus and it is suitably darkened all the way around it very pleasing image that was an eight and second as we said oh, sorry Fall leaves in a stream, Gloria Tobias. Yeah, um, it just took it, it took me a, a moment on when you know because I've tried to preview these as, as we would normally in in, in a club environment uh, to 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 actually sort of like realise oh I'm looking through water we've got some floating on top or some uh, un underneath and I I like uh, the idea that we've sort of photographed something under under the water, um, but but. Just where it pokes through in this sort of area, in this bottom towards the, to sort of the, the the left, and it comes through there. It really catches. It really catches the light. Uh, and I uh, I can't get rid of the uh, the, the the drawing now. Let's, uh, let's have a look. Oh, it's gone now. I think. Yeah, where it really sort of pulls into the uh, pulls it on the light, and that draws my eye. And again, it's one of those where I think. You've got some great colours, you've got a great subject, and the idea of it being underwater soup, I think you could go in closer and make this image a lot less busy, uh, and I think you'll have a sort of stronger a stronger image. It scored a five. Like in this, by Amy Langman. Yeah, well, it's a great subject, is, uh, is, 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 is like, and, and again, it just sort of, I, it was one of these where I just sort of thought, you know what, I wonder if I'm sort of seeing uh, one or two images, because some of the lichen just doesn't look like it could be on that stone, but uh, but I like it as it gives it a texture, and I look at this image as as a texture, uh, rather than actually as, as, a, as a finished, as, as a finished uh, uh, image. But actually, when you look at this, now I would imagine the histogram on this is quite flat. It just needs much more contrast into it to really sort of pull out uh, the detail, uh, the, the detail uh, within it. The whole thing just looks like it's almost a little bit foggy, a little bit so you know we can't sort of see into it. Super subject though, and uh, and and you know and super colours that you've got in there. That's a four. Watching everything by Angel Rivera. Yeah, certainly, certainly is. Nice little catch light in that eye uh, as well. The really beady eye, isn't it? You don't want to get sort of too close to a chap like this. You know, M might look reasonably friendly, but sort of uh, very sort of soon will sort of tell you that they're not. Um, yeah, great sort of feather we've got around this, around the face and and, and the back of uh, the back of the head. It's uh, not the best the viewpoints i think looking up at this yes it can make the bird look very uh very sort of dominant in, in frame but it looks like we're looking almost you know well if it was a human we'd say we're looking up your nose wouldn't we uh, and and i just sort of feel that that we're just too low uh, uh for for this again just composition wise just a branch going through through the back of the head you think, oh you know again if just if we could just pick a, a slightly different spot and we're cropped in really close uh, you know especially to that beak so if there's some space on the left uh let's have it uh but you have to say it looks like a, a really friendly chap uh, and uh, as, as friendly as it can get uh, and uh, i think you've really held the light well especially in the background because that must have been difficult you've got a good balance of contrast five Redheaded Beauty by Jackie Burke, first place. Well, I just thought this was an absolutely magnificent, uh, a magnificent shot, really lovely, and uh, it's it's one of those it's one of those where you can really appreciate it just looking at it on screen, and then you think, I wonder what the print looks like. 
because you know you can imagine this be be a really really uh, wonderful print it's the detail i think around the eye neck and the particularly the top of the head with that just that red part they look almost like matchstick heads uh, just there you're really sort of drawn into that and then it sits on this really soft bed of uh of of uh, you know uh, ice white uh, uh, feathers no detail in the background doesn't need any detail in the background it's just a very very sort of slightly uh, a different shade uh, to that to that to that foreground but this old sort of like uh, swoop of, of the neck and the feather detail uh, within it was just a really beautiful image i say that was Vince said that was a nine in first place Autumn Watercolors by Wendy Ferraro. Yeah, well, I'm I'm pleased someone's put in an, an, an image like this because this is a real photographer's uh, subject, isn't it? It's actually sort of seeing the colours into sort of somewhere where, you know, it's really clear water. We're just seeing that, uh, that, 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 that reflection. Uh, and, and as the water moves and it rises and falls, uh, he offers these sort of small individual pools, really, that you can that you can sort of take uh, take images and capture light and colour in. But these are quite often uh, taken, uh, uh, sorry, communicate better if you take them much closer because we've got some leaf floating around at the top. And that becomes a little bit of a distraction. And then we've got brighter parts and darker parts. We've got a bright part on that left-hand side. The image for me... It's just in this sort of central, really focused part just there. That is a delight you've caught in just there. Now, I'm not sort of saying crop all that out because, you know, you can just lose sort of some of your, uh, some of the quality of your image. But I really would say that next time you sort of take this, really focus in on some of those and get that, that, that rich detail. It makes a beautiful abstract. And that's a six. Aurora by Jane Rowan. Honorable mention. Yeah, I think you know I uh, I, I judge um, uh, well somewhere between eighty and hundred times a, a, a year, and, and I have to sort of say I I, I judge uh, the, the Aurora a, 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 an awful lot. What I really was drawn to uh, in this was yes, of course, the light, but the light on the uh, on the mountains. As well, and the, and and I just sort of thought that just giving us some detail on on that mountain really sort of made sense of the image, and there's just a little bit of light in, in just in the base as well, which I think is either snow or some some reflection on the, on water, and then offering most of the, our image to the sky, and these little specks, these little speckles that we've got of of stars in the background. Ground. Again, it just makes you that that real feeling of openness and 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 you know and being at one with nature. Super shot. To say it was an eight and an honourable mention. Hercules Club, James Aguido. Yeah, I found this uh, a, a really an, an an unusual uh, a, 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 you know a subject. It looks really sort of spiky and actually uh, quite horrible to uh, to get near or. or or handle. Uh, I couldn't quite make sense of the, of the viewpoint here, uh, and that's because I can sort of see the ground in the background, and it sort of appears to be sort of twisted, so sort of somewhat. You know, I sort of think that the that the correct way is at something like forty five uh, degrees to that, and it sort of confused me a bit. And I thought, well, maybe that you know I shouldn't be looking at the background, but I I am because I can actually sort of see it. So uh, I found that the background and the foreground just uh, just didn't sort of uh, just didn't quite work. It's a it's a great subject, and and I sort of think that you you've got an opportunity here to almost make a landscape of this. You know, just look like mountains. Uh, you know that, uh, that 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 we've got growing that we've got growing here. So I think again, it's one of those where I think you could get a little bit sort of closer in uh, as as it sort of stood. I just didn't find it really that attractive because I'm not quite sure which part I should be looking at. There's a bit that's in focus. But there's not sort of enough in focus, and the bit that's in focus isn't any different to the bits that that aren't. So I just sort of didn't th feel that it really sort of told me enough uh, about itself. So uh, it didn't sort of communicate itself well to me, and that was a four. Bud, by Brett Hartkopf. 
Yeah, certainly. Well, we've, we've certainly got bud. We've certainly got several buds. If uh, if we're really honest, we've got that central one just peeling open. That's a lovely sort of. Uh, uh, we can sort of see everything tight and just about to unfurl in there. But the contrast here, we've lost detail on that, and that's actually our subject. Uh, and it feels very white. I can sort of see some curls in that left hand side, some folds in there. But actually around that crown, around that sort of top, I've lost detail. And that is such a shame. So holding, you know, retaining sort of detail in those parts is, is absolutely uh, critical. I quite like the wider view of it because, you know, there is an argument to sort of say, let's get close in. But I sort of think, you know, sort of showing that leaf in the background, I think there's a good idea to leave that in. Just the uh, just that you need to keep the detail on the on on the on the image, you know, on, the, on your subject itself. That will make a much stronger image. And that's a four. Warshock Rock, Amy Langman. Yeah, I wasn't quite sort of sure again of of, of 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 scale here. I could be really, really close, or you know, I could be looking at a drone shot or or something like that. You see, it, I felt it, so it became you know quite uh, uh, quite an abstract. It's a, a pleasing abstract, uh, but uh, I I just sort of found that I because I just couldn't quite make sense of it. I sort of thought you know maybe I want sort of something to draw me in, and that really is possibly sort of a bit more detail. It, again, it's an image that's got lots in it. You know, lots of sort of texturing, lots of sort of shape and swirls around. It just needs a more detail extracting uh, out of it. It gives the image a little bit more sort of punch uh, as well. And to sort of draw the viewer in uh, would make it much, much stronger. Lovely colour palette. That's a five. Cross flower, Angel yeah. Rivera. Yeah, really unusual. Uh, we, 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 we've got we've got here. It's a, it's a real spike, isn't it? And then... Uh, it's you know guarded the the, the flower by uh, well I, I I'm not quite sure the, the, where the petals would be but that looks a uh, you know you know, a bit of a weapon rather than uh, rather than a flower again I think it, we've talked about this quite a bit tonight but sort of depth of field is that that you know we've got part of this uh, part of our subject is actually out of focus before we get to the the central part so if you can sort of take this then we need to sort of make sure that all our subject is sharp. That will make a much stronger image. Dealt with the background really well. It's just sort of some of the foreground is not dealt with just quite as well. And that's a five. Half-Hearted Antenna by Carolyn Jordan. Yeah, I found that the, this, what a really ugly beastie we've got here. Something out of Star Wars. That's how, that's how, that's how it sort of feels... Uh, 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 feels uh, feel, feels to me so this 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 critter really is uh, uh, an ugly an ugly looking chap. The base that we're that we're actually on this it's almost like, like sort of salt grains, isn't it, or something like that. Uh, then I I found that actually a really interesting part. You know this this depth, shallow depth of field uh, in there. I thought that 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 worked uh, that worked well. But the darkness of of our of our um, of our subject uh, just didn't work uh, for me. And again, sort of technically, just look at sort of some of the areas. We're getting some rainbow colours uh, coming through on this uh, on this back leg, just where it's very very bright, and we're losing some detail. It's where it's wet, uh, and that's uh, refracting uh, some of the light. Again, we've got that on the on the head. So you know, uh, uh, darken those areas down, lift up some light in those shadow areas, and that would sort of certainly strengthen an image. And that's a six. Orb Weaver by James Aguido. A great viewpoint we've got here. I thought that uh, I, I, I thought that worked because, it, it, you know, I like the, the we're in a position, the spider's in a position, then we've got a background in there. So I feel like that I'm looking up. Uh, probably not, but that's that's how it feels. And because the web is circular, I've got a feeling that the whole tree in the background is starting to look circular to me. And that's actually, I think, as we're just looking uh, around the web. But I just sort of thought, oh, that's really, really interesting. Uh, I'm actually more, more drawn into the web than I, than, than I am the spider because the spider's not big uh, in, in frame. But I found this area here on the left-hand side just, just really lovely, just the web. Uh, you know, just the web, and now it, it's not, you know, uh, completely uniform. It's, it's it's sort of structured in in unusual ways. And our our main character, the beast itself, is actually in the darker part of the uh, of the image. And I just sort of found that that was lost uh, a little bit. So not one of the stronger ones. And that was a five. Fallen ginkgo by Wendy Ferrara. Yeah, well, photography is about light, and and this is what I and I was really sort of. Uh, uh, 
dragged into this with, uh, with the light. I just sort of think the use of light here, it's very, very sort of soft, isn't it? We don't have any really bright highlights. And, and the power of composition and the power of light draws me straight to this leaf. Uh, and you know, it just feels very, very sort of central. Yet, I guess if we count the leaves, there's probably sort of 50 leaves that we can see. But I think that one, because it's not overlapped by anything, and, and then the, we see the detail on it, uh, and it, and it's probably the only one, maybe apart from the one very much at the top, that's actually that tone. And that's what separates it from this really uh, busy picture. And I think that worked really well. That's a picture I really enjoyed, and that was an eight. Speak no evil. Jackie Burke, and this was third place. Oh, that's just, it's just lovely, isn't it? You've got to have an all picture in, in, in every round, haven't you? And and uh, and here it is. Uh, speak no evil. I sort of think he's just, um, he's just, uh, I don't know, maybe sort of, uh, it, it looks like shocked. You know, he's either, either you've said something and, and, and it's like, oh, the shock or something like that. Or he sort of told you a really rude joke or something like that. I have no idea. But it's almost like a bit of, you know, sort of that, that human element here uh, of, uh, of you, you, you've caught with this uh, th this little fella. Uh, really, really engaging. You know, the eyes are looking sort of straight down, straight down the camera. That hand o o over the mouth is just sort of, you know, it's just, oh, you know, excuse me sort of look, isn't it? And look at those fingernails. You know, it's just, I just don't know. We've really drawn into it. Uh, I thought it was a really lovely shot, eight. And that's the end of Class B Nature. Are you okay to proceed, Jonathan? Oh, yeah. Let's carry on. Yeah, that's fine. All right. Um, so this is Class A Pictorial, Dr. Scrapple by Tim Huey. Yeah, I think it's a great, a great uh, humor image uh, here. You know, this is uh, obviously sort of something to uh, that's, uh, that, that, that's that's local to you, with the, uh, by the looks of uh, what is what is uh, what is holding there. The the food he's sort of checking that he's got a heartbeat. What a character uh, he is as well. The, the hat. The glasses uh, perched on the end of his nose, stethoscope, and and then and then and then a pipe of all things. Are these, but he's not smoking it. You know, there's, there doesn't even look like there's any tobacco or smoke in it. Uh, but yeah, I think it's a, it's a great sort of studio shot. A uh, little bit of humour in it. I, one I really enjoyed, and that was an eight. Flower by Steve Heidel. Yeah, this looks like a, you know at, at least a, a, a couple of uh, a couple of exposures, which has brought out some some wonderful colours uh, in, uh, in in the images. I like these sort of you know, purples, blues, and then with a uh, you know a, a yellow a yellow background. But I think that the way they overlaid just 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 confuse it uh, for me. Some of the blues and and purple uh, elements are actually sort of floating quite separately to sort of some of the the. the the, the base yellows and the base yellows look like they're sort of taken in a uh, a corrected uh, white balance and sort of some of the others look like they were sort of taken in a uh, in, in a much sort of cooler uh, uh, Kelvin value uh, and I just sort of find that whole confusion again it's an image that's really busy um, and I think sort of going into a smaller area you may find better because there's some blues out in the background uh, and you know so it's just just a little bit sort of too busy for me that scored a four. After the snow, Karen Lay. Yeah, I what I liked about this was the, the you know the, the, that that glow of warmth of the of the uh, of the light bulb, probably LED. It's probably as cool as anything, but you know what it's like these days. But uh, it just gives that that warm thing in in color tone, uh, and and then you know we've got this snow capped uh, old lamp. And then the the icicles hanging down, so it's warm on the inside, uh, cool cool on the outside. So I guess that's like our homes in the winter, isn't it? We try and keep it warm on the inside, uh, and then glazed. So I just sort of thought I like that sort of connection between uh, the outside and inside. Uh, it's a good observation. So seven. Lily, by Debbie Lewinson. Uh, lovely subject this, and I think sort of going in close. Uh, can can really work but the treatment that this has received in in, in post processing it just looks a little bit uh uncomfortable a bit hard for the uh for you know for, for the subject matter it really sort of gives it sort of a grittiness uh, uh to it rather than a rather than a grain feeling uh, to it. it just feels a more of a push than a than a, than a sympathetic grain of overlaid on it this single tone as well turning it into a looks like a single tone monotone a uh, monochrome which uh, i think does work uh, i'm just not sort of sure that this rose sort of color uh, works with it very contrasty 
uh, as well in sort of some areas. So it's not one of the strong ones, but it's a lovely sort of subject for. Oil drop extravaganza, Ivan Bub, and this got an honorable mention. Yeah, this is a lovely piece of uh, lovely piece of uh, photography, uh, and it's it's quite abstract, isn't it? Although we can sort of see all the bubbles around, and uh, and then we've got this, uh, you know, these oil drops uh, in there. The the um, picking up the lights and the darks and the some even sort of some detail in that purple uh, in 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 the background. So it gives us a sense of uh, you know maybe a bit out of space or a, a galaxy from uh, you know or something from another world. Uh, who knows. The bit that I just where it didn't sort of score top marks just on the left hand side. There's a few little sort of distractions, and I would just sort of tidy those those up a little bit. And there are one or two bright highlights just popping through uh, from the underneath. Lovely colours. That's an eight and honourable mention, as we said. Unexpected path by Mia Curran. Yeah, now I think there's a a, a story in this with unexpected path and and those. Uh, and 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 those colours, but I'm not going to be sort of a, I don't think led into it of 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 what that what that may mean. Uh, but we've got this, uh, this 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 tree trunk that's that that's painted. We've got sort of someone who looks to be sort of fairly sort of carefree walking across those, or stomping across those. Uh, and it, I think I might sort of take a little bit more caution at my age. You know, you might sort of might snap an ankle, but it looks like it, doesn't it? So uh, it's a little bit sort of daredevilish. Uh, we've got going going through there. I love the viewpoint of this, and I'd love that we've got that foot really in the air. I just sort of thought it just makes you look like that someone is being a bit sort of a bit sort of daring. Yeah, I, it's actually a simple image, but something I enjoyed. Seven. Window of hope, Rick Shea. Yeah, good message. To this, I think that's a super title. Titles are difficult as well, aren't they? Uh, but um, I, you know, I, I, I guess we're in sort of somewhere that's uh, probably not the most desirable, um, uh, um, not most des res as we call it. Uh, uh, um, you know, most most desirable residency uh, by the looks of those windows or anything like that. Or it wasn't at the time, but probably uh, would be now. And then looking out onto the, uh, the the Statue of Liberty, just making sure that we've got that in that sort of diamond area. So, yeah, looking from something that's old and decrepit to sort of something that, uh, you know, is really recognised, uh, uh, you know, world world worldwide. And, of course, there is, uh, you know, th there is hope, isn't it? That's the, you know, the mark of the free world, I guess. Yeah. Interesting image, six. Delicate. Tom Story, first place. Well, I just sort of thought this was an, an absolutely glorious, uh, a glorious shot, and we've seen quite a few little water droplets in uh, in, in uh, th th this evening. Uh, but I just sort of think that that colour grading from this, you know, pinky into purple, and then goes through a yellow and into almost a pea green on on, on that right hand side, and then uh, the this um, the, 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 this. Uh, well, I, I was I was subject, then just bursts out with all these little uh, beads or like 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 Christmas baubles. Uh, we've got just just hanging on there, picking up on the on the purple colour against the greens and 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 the yellows. And then I really liked how it laid into the water, uh, just on that right hand right hand side, and then it's really sort of strong reflection. So as it sits in the water, right and left, it's almost like it's the tension of the water that I can see. Super shot. Nine first place. Which way out, Vince Pellegrini? Third place. Yeah, well, it's an. Is it, is it one of those sort of shots where you sort of say, you know what? I just wish there was sort of someone in a red dress walking by to really make it. Actually, no, you don't need that. Um, it, it, I just sort of think this depth into it, sort of door through a door, uh, into another, into another, into another area. Uh, I just, uh, I, you know, I felt that that. That 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 worked. Um, again, the color tones going through, the light going through. A simple sh a simple shot, but a lovely piece of uh, lovely piece of, of photography. We like taking pictures of uh, things that are old and decaying. I guess that's because we're all well starting to get old and starting to decay a little bit. You know, it's uh, and, and we're sort of drawn into that. But yeah, lovely use of light. Uh, mm -hmm. As we said, eight in the third place. White stripes dance by Bob Gross. Yeah, I guess we're sort of growing off the side of a tree here with this uh, the, 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 this this fungi. Uh, so a really a really interesting one. Uh, and then we've got the 
you know the the, the green and, and white stripes. So I guess that's marking either you know uh, either sort of something rare or, or or the tree. I'm not so sure. I don't really understand the the, the relevance of, of the two uh, together. So forgive me. Uh, for, so forgive me for that. I feel here, although we've we, we've got a great picture of this uh, of this. Uh, this this fungi, we haven't quite, you know, it's one of these images that screams out focus stack me, so I can get all the detail all the all all the way through. But I like that we've got it growing out of the tree, and I like that we've got the 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 sort of texture uh, in 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 the bark uh, in the bark area as well. So it's an, an image I did enjoy. Uh, seven. F one seventeen Nighthawk cockpit by Clay Meyer. Wow. Well, if that's uh, if 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 that's if that's a real one, uh, and we, we we've sort of seen it somewhere, great. It just looks. Uh, I'm just. I would just question the scale of that. It just looks a a smaller scale to me. But uh, but who knows? But it becomes almost abstract in itself, doesn't it? It 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 really does. Uh, and you know, we sort of see this uh, this the stealth of this, how we've uh, how it's built, and this really angular. Uh, uh, parts to it, a little bit of sort of text on 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 the right hand side. That's that's fine. We can sort of see the different windows in in the cockpit. So yeah, very unusual uh, unusual image. Uh, I like the sort of the, the, even the sort of shadow in this bottom uh, left corner works because it's sort of triangular and works with it. That's a seven. Pandemic project down the drain, Julie Stoffer. Yeah. I like this. It, 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 it's, it's, you, you can get some really great images out of just sort of simple shots, can't you? But uh, we've got all this, uh, yeah, you know, peel from, uh, uh, you know, from from onions, some 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 limes there, maybe a little bit of garlic. Uh, I think on on the right on the right hand side uh, on the right hand uh, side too. It's all just sort of like just thrown out there, isn't it? It's all the it's all it's almost like all the you know down the drain. So it's all the waste of it. Uh, as, uh, as as such, and then sort of taken from that unusual viewpoint, which is absolutely overhead, uh, 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 looking at it onto an almost uh, white background. I just thought that was just a really lovely piece of photography. Eight. Infinity, Alan Zimmerman. <clears throat> Well, I was drawn into this sort of shapes of these, and I and I really uh, really like the, the 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 grasses, particularly around this this area. I think that was where the sort of strength was, uh, uh, was for me. As it went into the brighter areas, into these areas, I found those sort of quite quite distracting, and it's mainly because they just didn't have uh, enough enough detail into it. That wispiness of the of the grey grasses are, are much much stronger in an oval uh, crop. I found that not so satisfying uh, to, to 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 see i think a circular or or, or you know or a square i think because you know because circles wear it work very well in square crops so i think a sort of circular you know circle in in a square i think that would be much stronger as it stands tonight it's a six sorry littlest angels jackie henny yeah, so we've had some big, big views tonight as well. We've had sort of some, you know, all sorts of different sort of shots, and now we've gone very sort of tabletop and sort of taken some of our small, uh, you know, figurines from home. Um, now we've got you know these three. We've got a little bit of sort of separation uh, uh, between them, and we are focusing on, you know, our our little angel in in the front, just sort of playing their instrument there. We sort of see the uh, see the. Uh, uh, the the wings i do um i do sort of question this of, of just you know what's the photographer input well it's a depth of field really um you know it's uh, someone else's work to sort of create them and, and we're putting a story together with it well to some point uh, to some d degree we are i just found the image just like that little bit of light with it and then we've got this very sort of dark uh, uh, but strong um, uh, angle, angle sort of here in the top, top, in the top right, and that's reflected in the bottom. And I just found that a little bit of a distraction too. That was a five. Speed Racers by Bill Coglin. Yeah, so uh, you know, well, you can go at quite a pace, can't you, with the on, on a bike and sort of choosing to not pan here, uh, go the other way around and just take a straight shot of the background, uh, and then uh, and just catch the racers. Uh, uh, going through i think your lead rider is super I th that 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 helmet we've got lots of detail you know the the, the stripes on 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 the shoulder uh, and we've got definition of those of those of those uh, wheels uh, too the central rider is is by far the weakest uh, i think it's just because 
he, he just doesn't we can't it's got to get any real definition in in that helmet but really what you need here if you're going to do this is a super strong background and i've got the we've got the compositional parts right the support vehicle the rider on the left and the bikes on the rack on the right but we've got some really bright parts shining off that off that vehicle and that actually needs to be a flatter background your light needs to be on the front with the racers so it's a, a great idea just needs a bit of uh, a bit of honing to get to perfection that's a six berries Ginny lard yeah. lovely little bit of uh lovely little bit of uh, uh tabletop there is is of the two sort of sides to this i sort of see that the berries are are absolutely beautiful uh, they look like a richness don't they and you know, i just want to pick one up and eat one even you know, out of the basket or even these ones on the right just where they're just that little bit sort of dark but just a bit the two in the background just touched with light so again lovely piece of photography the basket itself and then the base that we're on i just feel that they are almost a bit too strong for the, for the image and it so scale wise it just feels a little bit sort of too big for the berry but you know so maybe just darkening those down uh, and i think you know so, so we led more towards the berries but lovely light on the berries if they're if they're any good just pop them in the post seven parade lee reeves yeah we've got our i think we've got i think we've got our uh, our our, uh, our vendor here with the uh, with a face mask on i i i think uh, it gives us a, a, quite a ghostly figure uh, doesn't it? And uh, and I, I like that. Again, I think you're very clever how we've used this uh, black background. We've got these, you know, balloons and uh, and then this arm uh, coming out. Look at those fingers. They look all sort of distorted as they as they hold around those. Uh, I guess it's just the lights uh, uh, sort of coming 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 around those. But I find that 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 person, if we could sort of see the whole of the face rather than that mask, I think would 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 sort of strengthen the image. But yeah, interesting shot. We scored that a six. Eggs in a bowl by Jenny Lodge. Yeah, again, just a, a very interesting uh, tabletop and uh, image. Uh, but this is where sort of someone's really thought about the colours and how they've decorated this. You know, eggs. Well, we've got you know we've got four eggs, four different tones. We've got this uh, leaf around as well. This bowl uh, and with 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 a circular shape on it. Then we've got stripes of the table. So we've got lots of different textures, uh, and, you know, and, and different shapes. Uh, and then different tones of 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 of, of coloration, and I thought that was uh, again just really uh, well thought through. The there is just a bright edge on 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 this on this background. Just do be careful with 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 tabletop because you know you really do have well that's not quite but all the time in the world to take it. Just really be careful with the light. That was a seven. Landing station, Tim Uly, and this was the second place. Yeah, people sort of, wow, is that really a picture? Well, it is for me. I thought that was just a really super shot. Uh, I I particularly, I thought the composition of this was was really on the mark with this uh, this pole, uh, the, you know, this this telegraph pole in the, in the bottom right hand corner, uh, and and then these lines leading up from it, and then you know all all these birds. We got you know, I just got love this one landing. Look at this just in the top here. That's just great. It gives a really quite a scary feel to it. You know, that, that if you're out in the middle of nowhere and all these birds uh, amass on these wires or something, you know, it, it's like the birds, isn't it? You know, I just I just felt that this was a, a, a really sort of quite a creepy image. Really strong. I really liked that one. So, yeah, as I said, nine and second place. Looking inside Epler School, play Myers. Yeah, and it's all about light, isn't it? And I think there's some lovely light uh, in that. I like the condensation on the uh, on the window as well. It just sort of mutes the uh, the candle in the uh, uh, in the window. Uh, and then we've got you know the, the the church bells that look like a real sort of softness to them. But look at the color palette we've got going through. We've got sort of some greens as we've got reflections in the windows, and then into browns. It looks really sort of uh, really sort of soft. It makes it looks like a place of safety, uh, and that's how I sort of feel. I think you've really sort of communicated that well. That was an eight. The sun doth shine on me, Vince Pellegrini. 
Yeah, I didn't sort of feel that this was 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 a strong image uh, 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 for me. It just feels that yes, we have recorded uh, that, and I think the photographer is drawn into it because we've got light on 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 just one face, but we've still got sort of definition sort of throughout uh, the uh, you know the others. And I think by you know we've not sort of quite. I think we could have faked the, the the scale of it sort of somehow. It would it you know it would have worked better. But I just think that light was just too contrasty. It's put the rest of it into too much darkness. Uh, although the modelling light on the on our main character, who was a, a very handsome chap in the middle there, I have to say, uh, is is it's just a bit sort of too bright. So it didn't work for me. That's a four. Known's world by Mia Curran. Wow. Well, what a viewpoint, you know, maybe, you know, we got the camera on the ground there. That's how, how it looks to me. It's really a, a very, very uh, low uh, viewpoint. And I, th I thought that was interesting. But I think as you look round it, there's one or sort of two uh, sort of questionable parts where we, you know, we go in this top, top left area. We go out of focus. We've got a leaf here that goes very out of focus in, in the background. And then in the bottom right, there's something very, uh, very sort of soft very soft there colors going throughout and this uh, a landscape just bowing down uh, i think uh, i think works well but the sky just feels different under different light to the to the uh, uh, to the foreground so i didn't feel that that worked but i love this uh, panoramic view I, I really do like a, a panoramic i think it really adds drama into images that scored a five olds 88 rickshaw yeah. Yeah, that's, that's. I think I thought this was a, a really lovely image. I particularly like this sort of part coming in from the thought, like from the bottom left. I just sort of thought that really gave the image, you know, quite quite a lot of quite a lot of power. Uh, and it's just, you know, it's it's it's, it's not black and white. See the black or white sort of thing, isn't it? But that's, that's how that's how it looks. However, I, what I did find unusual about this was it's green. Uh, it's got like a green presentation. It's not. Uh, it's not a black and white as such. It it, it feels very very, uh, you know, like a, a cyan or a, or a, you know or, or a, towards a green. And I felt that uh, putting it as a true black and white would have been a stronger image. Nevertheless, wonderful composition. Eight. Andy Kane, Lee Reeves. Yeah, what a really what a really unusual thing. So I guess we're at a, you know like a fun fair or, or something here. I've I've, I've I've no idea. But look how that pops out against the against the background, and then to you know just give us a second element in there. We've got this uh, almost like radio mast on on that on that right hand side. The colours just feel a little bit sort of false in the background. That blue, but I think it sort of sets off against this this candy cane. Uh, neon candy cane red red and white so i found it a really sort of simple image quite a, a graphical uh image i know it's just a very unusual enjoyed that one eight in the forest ellen zimmerman maybe a little maybe a little bit of abstract paint or or, or something who knows what what, what, we, what we found here just sort of seeing something on 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 the wall and then putting a title to it of in the forest and i've got the river going through the middle and it's got all these little trees uh, in there and i can sort of see you know the, the 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 lighter green is the is the forest floor and then the where we've got li less color you know maybe they're sort of like uh you know bluebells or flowers or something so i just sort of thought we got the whole story going on it took me a little while to read the story and I'm looking at the texture in 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 the water yeah i really enjoyed that one it was a fantasy uh, image i think it's great eight sorry going in circles Aren't, aren't they absolutely huge aren't they you know it's like you know you could bake a pizza in one of those you know that's they're just huge aren't they and then these red rims so i sort of think you know as as a as a documenting uh, uh you know that uh, that 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 that, uh, that pond life then i, I think uh, i think that's great I'm taking it with a wide angle so we've got all these circles within a circle great we've, we've got um We've got mum and, uh, and 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 auntie over there or wherever we in, in the background with the with, with the buggy, uh, and I'm just wondering if you know does that really sort of fit? I like that curvature that we've got with this wide angle, but the inclusion of the people and the background, I think we could have just sort of stayed in, got a little bit more abstract. Light was a little bit sort of too strong too, just reflecting on there. But I just sort of love the curve of it. It makes it look like a big button, doesn't it? Super six. Vitamin B, urea, photomicrograph, Ivan Bub. Yeah, why not? 
So we're looking under a a a, a microscope here, and I guess we've false coloured that, in, uh, and you know, and they all look like a zoom, don't they? They look a bit of a zoom burst, uh, and and I just sort of thought this made a, a really a really uh, a really good pattern, but. I just found it just felt that little bit sort of false. The colours just uh, just didn't quite gel for me. So it's sort of like sort of smeared into each other. And it looks like almost each one feels to be sort of copied over. And I couldn't quite make sense of this black river uh, go, going through going through uh, 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 the base of it. So it's an image I think it would have been filled in uh, and we've got less sort of pulling apart of the, of the colours. I think it would have worked stronger. Score to five. Tulip abstracts. Julie Stoffer. Well, it's risky putting three in. I mean, it's bad news putting one in front of a judge, but putting three in, you're putting, you know, adding the risk in, aren't you? Um, I like the idea of threes. I think triptychs work work very well. But in this set, I just found each one just that little bit busy. The strongest one for me is the one on the right because I think the colours are bolder, uh, and that uh, purple sort of stands out a great against that lime green in the background. But when you look at that. Uh, vividness of colour on the right and then you look in the centre one the centre one is much more much more muted uh, so I just don't think they really work uh, as, as a set which is a little bit of a shame but I like the idea of this double exposure I think that works well that's the five Ice Steve Heidel uh, this is an image that I that I didn't score highly but I think it's an image that's got potential uh, and here it's because I think if you look at your histogram, it's very it's going to be very very flat, and it just needs uh, it just needs more punch into it, it needs more contrast putting into it, you know something to draw out uh, 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 of this. The you know I, I feel we're looking at you know at, at water. It's called ice, but just for me, just it, it's a real watery uh, 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 effect. Um, but as I say it's you know, great abstract, just needs some more definition into it. That was a four. Forgive me by Bob Gross. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, you know, who, who doesn't love uh, these uh, these sort of swirly round uh, uh, rose petals? And here we've got it with with ward beads of uh, of water uh, on there, just to give a little bit of uh, addition to it. Um, the risk of doing that is that uh, we sort of we can uh, encourage sort of some softer parts. In, in into the image and again it's another one of these where it just needs a little bit more detail i think to come out of it it's lacking slightly in 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 depth of field but i do like that we've got some light into the sort of shadow areas i think you've really sort of controlled your shadows uh, very very well and i'm pleased that you put it sort of slightly off center but i would encourage you just to sort of look at maybe a square crop with this it might just make it a little bit more powerful still interesting image it's it's got a seven through the fence by Karen Lay. Yeah, I thought this was uh, I thought this was uh, you know uh, in interesting that we've just got to, you know it's an, a good observation of how the snow has been you know blown against uh, this fence and it's 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 got thick enough to sort of you know around the wires that it can actually sort of stick and I guess we're now at a point where we're just starting to lose that and it's starting to melt. We've got still that wintry sky behind with this greyness uh, and then we've. You you know, really brought out the whites. Uh, so we've got a grey, a white, uh, and a black. Probably a full colour image. This, uh, it, it, you know, may or may not be, but it, 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 you know, it almost throws itself as a as a monochrome. It presents naturally as as almost a monochrome. So a lovely pattern into it. But where does your eye settle? Not sure, but interesting to look at. That six. Homegrown beauty, Jackie Henney. Oh, I could just eat that as well. That does look nice, doesn't it? It 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 really does. Uh, again, we've sort of seen this a few times uh, tonight, where we've got just that that lack of depth of field in some of the in some of the images. So the you know the very top of of of, uh, of the tomato is is you know is is wonderfully sort of sharp, and we can sort of see that tightness of the skin at the top. But if we look around the edges, look at the left edge here, and that's just because of you know, lack of sort of depth of field, it starts to almost give us like a double edge, uh, and it's just it's just starting to get sort of you know fuzzy. And I, I think yes, that can add an artistic element into it, uh, but I just sort of think you need a bit more than what we've got because you know these bits here are sharp, but even in the centre, which is you know not far away from the from the front of those, uh, it just it does go soft, very little uh, in focus. 
lovely background though i have to say that muted background is a real sort of delight i love that sort of separation and pulling something forward it's a six the singer bill Cobham. yeah i i really i really like the the idea of this of, of getting in getting in close we don't need to see the whole of the band uh we just want to sort of see you know this singer's connection with with her crowd uh, and that is just to sort of sing soulfully into this microphone. It's just, we can almost hear that voice uh, coming out. Uh, but I did sort of find with this that the 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 way that we've processed this that she's quite green. She's got this sort of like green tinge onto on onto her face, and I just felt found that that little bit just it just didn't quite fit uh, with that. I've got a little bit of glow around that uh, around that microphone, but lovely composition, right idea, just not quite. Uh, executed um, uh, as well as it could be and that's a five shoot through by debbie lewinson yeah i really sort of uh 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 picked her, and i guess we're sort of shooting through something because around the edges we're really sort of fuzzy uh and green now we can sort of say that that is adding into the image or is it just a green vignette i i'm, I'm not sure but i find that just a little bit of a distraction uh in, in in sort of some of the some of the areas the underside of this beast you sort of coming down is great if i think if uh if a butterfly uh ever wore a wedding dress and that's uh <laughs> that's what they'd look like you know that's how it feels to me that that ivory that ivory look to it but again just the flowers on the left hand side those very very pretty little really little yellow flowers are oh, just wonderful but we've got these two much sturdier uh, uh um uh, characters coming in here and i find that they just block my view from going in and i just sort of think that really sort of took away uh, from from the image but this bit is a delight it really is and that's a seven and that's the end of that um, section. And our last is Class B Pictorial. <clears throat> Split by David oh. Lovell, and this got a third place. Yeah, I thought this was a I thought this was a great shot. Risky to put into a club competition, I think. But you know, you never get anywhere without a risk, dear. Uh, and I think I think that, you know I absolutely applaud you for doing that because. I think what you've picked up on is just that 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 shape of it just coming down. It's like like a uh, almost like a drone picture, isn't it? You've got a little river sort of uh, you know coming down, and then the sort of that sort of slow sort of change of color from from top to bottom. Some lovely sort of texture uh, coming through as well. Really sort of simple shot, you know. And you just but it, it, you know it doesn't. I think, as we see in this, you know, like on the on a video stream through Zoom, it really doesn't sort of show the quality of what I saw when I previewed it. The texture in this really is just beautiful. As I say, that was a nine and third. Visiting Mary Potts by James Yost, and this scored first place. Yeah, well, we take photography again by with with, with the. With, it is about light and i think the light in here is just absolutely first class it it, it really is it's very very sort of um, soft in areas but even and then just touched are the the parts that, that that we really want to be drawn really want to be drawn into but i think the the author here has, has, has really looked at the use of color and position that book leaning to the right just to sort of like push us over uh, to make sure that we you know we don't sort of go too left out out of frame it points upwards to uh, to an item uh, on on top of the sort of shelving and then we've got different items uh, in in the shelves all different colors different shapes uh, and different textures. And I think that's, uh, again, a really well thought through composition, beautifully photographed, really beautifully presented, nine in first place. Sunset Pelican on the Gulf, Gloria Tobias, and this got honorable mention. Yeah, again, you know, we don't need to sort of see the the the, the detail of, of 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 the pelican. Um, here we've got, uh, it's, you know, is it all about the sky? I just think it's about that sort of being sort of silhouetted. It really gives you a, a lovely sort of sense of of evening feeling of the light going. You know, the pelican just uh, you know looking for his uh, last fish 
of, 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 of the day, that head sort of uh, pointing down. We know it's looking, uh, you know, at, at the water. And then, the, you know, just those two legs, I just sort of thought these just look great. And that was a really super shot. That's an eight, an honourable mention. Nailed it or something, Angel Rivera. Yeah, well, we photograph everything, don't we? You know, and and and, and absolutely as 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 we sh as we should. Uh, I'm not quite sure what exactly what this is. It looks like sort of timber, uh, and then we've, but we've got something certainly man-made in there with it being with it being sort of circular. But this image again, it's got a lot of uh, it's, it's hard light. It's very harsh light uh, that we've got on there. It gives us a really sort of strong shadow uh, coming in from that uh, coming in from that left hand side. Our sun is there over uh, over on the left. Lovely colours as we go through that. I love this tealy, uh, this tealy blue. I thought that uh, that worked well. But the whole image just appeared that little bit sort of soft. It's one of those where it needs darkening down, a little bit of detail to come out of it a bit more. Let's go to five. Friday night by Wendy Ferrero. Now is this a selfie? I have no idea. Or maybe there's someone in the tub with you. I I, I really I, I really don't know. Um, I like the idea of this. I, I'm sold on I'm sold on the idea that it's Friday night, stressful week at work, and then you know we come home and it's you know so it's a few candles, put a bit of music on, get a bottle uh, bottle of wine in the in the fridge, uh, and we're just going to take a long a, a long soak. Uh, so I'm I'm all for that and get some get some bubbles in there. But I did sort of find that the uh, again the sort of quality of this capture just it really wasn't there when 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 I viewed it. It feels it's take either caught on a very very sort of small sensor or in really weak light, uh, and it, we just didn't sort of bring out any any detail. I like the i the the, the look of it's got almost like a bit of a retro feel to it as the image. It just feels a, an older image, uh, but it just didn't sort of quite uh, quite work for me. Great idea, though. So please do try it again. Uh, four. Bark by Brett Hartkopf. Yeah, I found this uh, just it just uh, really didn't work uh, uh, for me. I think it, the the, uh, the bark is always interesting to photograph, but I have to sort of say it's it's an extremely difficult subject, and that's because these trees uh, they need to we need to get square trees that can sit flat onto you, but to, which you know the round trees they always sort of curve away, and the interesting parts of bark are when you're getting really really close, and here as you can sort of see it start as it's turning away, it's just it's starting to fall off the the the, the depth of field, and you get some really funny edges uh, with it and in the center of the image is the darkest part and we can't sort of really see into that the brighter parts are, are more interesting we need to get in much much closer it's a super subject please do we keep trying you've really caught the colors well three Lime by amy langman yeah i thought this was a, a an, in, an interesting image to sort of say that we you know we, we could question what is the subject but for me it's a pattern picture uh, and and I sort of see these this this like curvature of these the supports on the underside of the of the um, of the benches that caught me, and as it, it just sort of goes up off into that that top right hand corner. Um, great use of monochrome here, and I thought that uh, converted uh, quite well. I do wonder if we need these two bottom steps. I just found that they just took like forty percent of the of, of the of the height of the image, uh, and they're the really brightest bits. I think the pattern above it uh, is stronger. But yeah, uh, a, a great one of those sort of things that you've seen that a lot of people wouldn't. Uh, six. Steampunk Dino. By yeah. James uh, why not? Uh, I, I thought. I thought. I thought the. Uh, I thought the T Rex or whatever we've got here, um, I, I you know I liked him. I don't know, it's a it's a kid's toy or something like that. I think the use of the second one as well in in the background is uh, is is really good. So we sort of see the neck of the first one, and then uh, and then we sort of see uh, everything but the but the head uh, on on the second one in the background. So I thought that was good, but the, it's that brightness in 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 the background that sort of caught me. We've got areas here that are extremely sort of bright, and just uh, I just found a, a real. A, a real distraction and I'm really not keen on sort of seeing someone's door in there it sort of takes away from the story uh, uh, for me and that's scored a four Bentley by Carolyn Jordan yeah uh, wonderful car nice to see one with a really with a chrome bonnet as well that's uh, I think that's a, a, a really lovely car we don't need to see the whole of the car just this you know we've got this this headlamp and then the, the, the little bit of the grill and, and, and most of this uh, 
almost this this this, this bonnet and this burgundy sort of side to it too. So I thought that was that was interesting. Um, less interested in the in the vehicle uh, next to it. I think isolation of, of a vehicle, getting a little bit closer uh, and and cut the other vehicle out. In fact, you make almost a, a bit more of an abstract to to it. I think I, th I think would uh, would would improve it. And again, it's an image that just needs a little bit of lifting, a little bit of light lifting in. It just feels like a little bit flat. Yeah. Lovely subject, isn't it? Six. Perky screw, Angel Rivera. Yeah, well, we're definitely sort of drawn into uh, you know a, a very sort of shallow de depth of field. Now, I wonder what my subject is here because the the bit that's actually sharp is this part here, and that is lovely. I've no idea where it is, but it looks like almost sort of something that was that was uh, you know molten at the time, and now it's just you know. It frozen over, doesn't it? Uh, but that's that's actually the subject because because it, it, it's the sharp part. Yeah, I think that that really um, by the title that this is is the subject uh, here, but it's just not sharp. So we've got our focus on the wrong point, uh, and I do find that this bit of light uh, very distracting. It goes sort of really sort of soft in what is a very hard, uh, very hard uh, 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 subject. So this. As I say, really shallow depth of field, just in the wrong place. The bit that is sharp, I have to say, is really lovely. And it's a three. An ode to John Wilkinson, James Yost, second place. Yeah, again, lo lovely use uh, of uh, of light, really sort of quite, uh, again, quite flat light, I would sort of say in this. But this is an area where uh, where, where it works. Uh, we've got, um, we got the avocados uh uh, 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 there and then we've got the little stone, I, I guess, uh, in the uh, in in the little vice uh, 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 in the uh, in the middle. So I've got this great big sort of um, uh, you know machine to 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 just to just do this, and uh, you know, and we're sort of uh, we're sort of showing it off almost as a I guess a bit of a museum piece. I think there's some very careful arrangement here, isn't there? Even the wheel in the centre, those three spokes, looks like the well, the Mercedes uh, badge, really, doesn't it? With the, you know, absolutely vertical, making sure of that, uh, and then that uh, that little clamp uh, on on the top, lovely place, really sort of close to the top, and how level we are uh, with that uh, with that wooden uh, table that we're on. Yeah, super shot nine and second place. Chrysler Building by James Aguido. Great. I think that we that we decided not to take the whole of the Chrysler building. As beautiful a building it is, but getting in closer like this is a really good idea because we can sort of see the texture uh, of 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 different elements uh, of, of this. Again, I think we you know we've got a full color image. We've got a blue sky there. Uh, we've got this panel in, uh, which is great, isn't it? You know, it really, it looks like it was. It looks handmade, doesn't it? It looks like we beat one of each one of those uh, by hand. Uh, it looks sort of quite a you know, a, a, a basic put together uh, it appears uh, from here. But it's one of those images that just lacks that punch again. You know, it's just quite flat. And I just sort of think there's a lot more in there. You know, that 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 metal just doesn't quite shine as, as, it, as, it, as it should. You know, don't be frightened of giving sort of an image like this some detail. It's, it's even though it may be a full color image, it appears almost monochromatic on that metal area and really give it, you know, give it a monochrome punch to come out. It's an eight. Addy by Brett Hardkoff. Oh, what a lovely girl she is, isn't she? I really that sort of. We were all that young and innocent once, I'm sure. Even Vince, but we were, you know. We, and I, 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 I love that sort of that sort of, you know, the the just that cuteness, you know, that how how, how sort of someone is at that age, you know, big eyed, you know, button nose, uh, you know. It's uh, it's a really lovely picture. I think it's a good crop this as well. Sort of taking in the taking off, really lopped off the top of the head and the back of the head. Because what you're sort of saying is, it's all about her face. You don't want to sort of see what her hair looks like. You know, we we, we can sort of see uh, enough enough of it. I sort of felt that we had a lack of sort of lack of engagement here. That we were just we were there, but she was actually more interested in 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 someone else. To a degree, that's fine. But but you know, I think we've got again just that we've not quite got focus that this eye that we see, that we are left eye that we see on the right, is really really soft uh, compared to 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 the right eye, and the brightest part of the image is actually just these uh, two small parts here and they're again in the in the in the not focus area so we're drawn away from 
from this from this uh, from this right side of her face uh, were drawn into the uh, into the weaker part of the image, which is a little bit of a shame. But it was scored a seven. Cheers. I went uh, di different viewpoint. A great different viewpoint we've got there. Looking straight down into the glass. Goodness knows what you've got that you know got some mat around it or something like that, bringing in the colours though. Uh, and then we've got this uh, you know it's this cherry. Uh, floating in the top of this really fizzy drink. Do you know what? That could be it could be alcohol in the bottom of that. I and mean, we just put a mixer in. Who knows? It it, it could well be. But I love all this uh, effervescent, these bubbles just 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 coming up. And then this huge sort of circle in a square crop. Well done. Eight. Loss. Amy Langman. Yeah, so uh, you know, whenever we put text into into an into an image, we're bound to be sort of drawn in and 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 and, and read the text, and 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 there and and there we uh, there we have it. Uh, away away from that, we've got some uh, great sort of uh, texture and colours into into the in 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 the background. Um, I did find though, if you're going to leave sort of text into this, we've got it running across as a strip right across the middle, and I just sort of think either putting it at the bottom or at the top would be stronger. And the reason I say that was, is that if, by just putting it across the middle, it just looks like we're taking a picture of the text and it just happens to be there, the top and the bottom. If we put it at the top and then give lots of space at the bottom, you know, it's going to say a third text. So we've got a third text at the top and then two thirds all together at the bottom. I think we'd be saying, look, this texture in the bottom is equally as important as the text is. Uh, so I just sort of think we've got to th think about that sort of positioning uh, uh, with with that. So it's not one of the stronger ones, but I think you're on the you know they're on the right track. I would just sort of think about you uh, how you actually uh, present it. That's a five. And with that, we're we're done. I'll stop screen sharing. Uh, I don't know how the audience feels, Jonathan, but that was fantastic. It was your critiques were were so good. You moved along beautifully and. Um, Certainly, I found it very helpful in okay, right. from others' images, et cetera. Um, how about if we let you screen your or share your screen and you can show us what you'd like to show from a processing point of view? Okay, let me just have a look. Thank you so, so much. Okay, no problem, Ben. So that's all. I've just marked a couple here that we can. Everyone's going to have a dread think, oh no, one of mine doesn't come up, but. Uh... I'm afraid that's the way it goes. Right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I think I, I commented on on this one that uh, uh, you'll see my cursor in the middle. It's got a big green, yes. uh, big green thing around it. Right. Okay. Uh, yeah. I, I sort of said about this one about it being. Um, let me just zoom that in a little bit. That I I, I really liked this one. Um, I, I just thought it was a great sort of composition, but it just wasn't presented as a black and white, and it doesn't have to be. But I, I just sort of felt you know it's. Um, because it's chrome, uh, you just generally don't want color into it. And I, and I can prove that there's color into this. Let me just zoom around a little bit here. I'll just put some bits down. Um, but if I put a hue and saturation layer onto it, and if I saturate this, you'll see that it is actually blue. And and I just sort of found that that just didn't work. If If it's because you've used, you know, maybe gone through a, a filter or something to, to process it and if you want to make sure that it's black and white then uh, all you need to do is uh, if you use photoshop is um, uh, just put on an empty layer and just fill that with uh, black just an empty layer just a completely black uh, empty layer okay and then if you just move that onto color blend mode then you've got exactly the same image, but it's absolutely now a true black and white. So I'll turn that black layer off. That's where it's uh, blue, and that's where it's neutralized into black and white. And it, it, just to prove that, that that works, and works every time, by the way, will never fail you this. If I now put hue and saturation on and just saturate it, it doesn't saturate it at all because there's no color to saturate. And I think that would... I think that would definitely uh, uh, be, be 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 much much stronger. Um, uh, would it sort of take a little bit more? I've not even looked at this, but let, would it sort of take a little bit more um, uh, brightness? It probably would look. It probably you probably could just come up a little bit more sort of in the in the in the brightness sort of stakes uh, as well, just to just make it sort of pop just from there. 
to there. So just a couple of layers. You sort of see that's very, very blue. That's much more sort of, a, you know, pops out much more. But yeah, lovely shot. Really like that one. Okay, so that's uh, that's that one. And tap for a couple more. Ah, now, now I didn't score this highly uh, at all, um, but I just really wanted to pull this one out because I just think it's a lovely abstract. It, it's just not, uh, it's presented in a really, a really dull way. Now I'm going to drag the histogram out. And if I go to, I'm going to expand this out, expand it out. Uh, and I guess we look at a histogram and we see, we see this. So we, we will generally sort of see it as colors. Let's sort of see it as RGB. Okay. So we see, we see this histogram and we just sort of think, oh, I, I don't want to, I don't want to sort of like come in too far because I'm going to blow, I'm going to blow, I'm going to blow it out there. So I think, well, you know, so I've only got a little bit, so I can't really come in. So if we just sort of put a levels layer on, we think, we think here, look, let's just drag this out as well with it. We think, oh, I can't come in because if, if I come in a little bit, oh, I don't want to go any further than that because I'm going to cause problems. So that's as bright as I can go. Let me just move these slightly out of the way of the picture. So we, we think that's how we think, but it really is dull. So I would sort of suggest, particularly on um, abstract images, is, that, is to not always look at it as RGB right? because that is, that is your color distribution. It's not actually your brightness. And that's what a lot of people misunderstand about, about histograms. They're sort of thinking that is a distribution of the light. It's not, it's a distribution of the color. So if we look into, sorry, here's a histogram down here, isn't it? If we look at the histogram and look at it in luminosity, look at this. It's a completely different histogram, right? Completely different. So the brightness is, is a long way and that's why i said the image looks flat so if i bring this in to something like that let's correct it so now if i just put my output there down now i've still got some space at the end of the histogram i've got a lovely brightness lump here looks lovely but you think hang on a minute what's all this because that's sort of saying it should all oh, this should be blown out, and actually it's not, and that is because what we've got here is this is a potential color clip, but in an abstract it doesn't really matter because if we look at this now in colors, be blue, won't it? Yeah, it's the blue that's the problem, nothing else. The gray is the luminosity. So if we look at that, if I go back into RGB. I pull that down. Oh, sorry. Let's pull it back uh, into. Let's put it into colors. Yeah. Look, it's the blue that's the problem. That's that big hump, right? Not not the luminosity. Look, not all the other colors. It's only it's only the blue. And in it's certainly in an abstract, you can completely ignore that. Just 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 really don't worry about it. Just think about the luminosity. Bring this in. Stretch that luminosity out something like that, and you'll get a much stronger image. And look how that just pops out. It's really flat there. That just zings out a much, much, much stronger image. Okay. I think, so I think that would really work for you. That's really muddy where it is. Okay. So just think about your histograms and, uh, and, and, and understand them, the difference between RGB and luminosity. Okay. Let's have a look at the singer. Ah, I think this was the, the lady with the green face. Yeah, just that's a shame that. And I guess that could be light that's cast onto her, uh, you know, because it's stage lighting. I don't know what it is about stage managers, but they love different color lighting, don't they? They love blues and reds and greens and purples and things. And of course, as a photographer, it gives you nothing but a look. They just don't think about us photographers. You know, there's a complete lack of uh, care about a photographer. Uh, but I just wondered if this was actually, you know, maybe just a strong in a uh, in 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 a monochrome. I've not tried it yet, but uh, um, well, you know, I guess we could do. Let's just try that. You know, is it is it is it a monochrome image? We, if it is, we could blacken her lips off or or something like that. You know, maybe it's maybe it's sort of something like that. You sort of see that cyan. Look at that. How we can control the the microphone. You know, one of my comments was the microphone is really difficult. 
So look, that that did see that that fuzziness we get around it there. We're losing sort of clarity, uh, but we could bring that back. Look at that. Look how that works now. That's lovely. You might say, well, I don't want a monochrome. Right. OK, if you don't want a monochrome. What we'll do is this black and white adjustment layer. You don't have to have a black and white adjustment layer to make it black and white. You can work with this on a color image, but still use a black and white adjuster. How do you do that? Right. So we go to blend mode and we say we don't want to take let's just let's get rid of this layer just so you i don't think i'm pulling any trickery on you and we just pop it on again so it, this is as it comes in so we go to black and white and, and then if i just move this to luminosity value like that okay so now it, it's a black and white layer but it's only going to work with the luminosity value the brightness value and this is bright so it's not going to change it to black and white because it's not going to change the color values. It's going to change the luminosity values. And if I control that cyan, look how I bring that detail back. Oh, look at that. Okay, an easy look at that from that flaring out. It's like see, it's almost like flaring there. It's like a like a you know so you know what I mean. And just bring that back. Look at that. It just brings back beautifully. Uh, you can bring that back. That's that's great. Okay, so I'll I'll go with that. I wonder what blue does. Look, blue's going to do, yeah, blue and cyan, they're close to each other, aren't they? So that'll just bring, that just really calms that down. The lady's face is that little bit green, so um, I could, could probably control that with that, but, you know, I'm going to call this, I'm going to call this uh, Mike, because that's a microphone I've dealt with, okay? Well, I'm going to put another one in. I could probably do it all in one layer, but I'm not going to confuse myself at all. So let's have a look at, say, a hue and saturation. Uh, we'll go for a hue and saturation layer rather than a a monochrome layer and uh, I'm going to look at this she's going to be yellowy green see yellow cell up so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sort of just bring that I'm going to bring that up I see see how she's green it's a bit greeny so I bring these this, if it brings yellow and green up so you sort of see how, you know, how green she is so she's going to be predominantly yellow because uh, all skin tones um, are, are really sort of similar so if you're light skinned you'll be more yellow than red if you're dark skinned you know you're slightly more red than yellow well in the world of photoshop you know your skin tone's really your skin tone isn't it uh but i guess it's going to sort of say some yellow it's going to be let me just put the dipper on so it's going to be sort of yellowy yellow yeah it's going to be yellow it's going to pick up on yellow okay let me just uh, find a mouse mat I realize i'm operating without a mouse mat just a little bit that was a bit hard oh well that's better right okay so it's it, it's generally yellow Okay, so now we could we've got a couple of things we can do here. We can sort of desaturate the yellow and make it look a little bit sort of grey. That that might be okay. Or we could just you know maybe move the hue of it. So I mean, it's just put a little more sort of pink into it. That's okay. Maybe just sort of lower the saturation down a little bit. Maybe just just like that. Okay, that's that that's fine. Okay, that just sort of takes that little bit of green, a little bit of green out of it. Let's just put more green in, put more red into it. Like you can make it look blue or whatever, whatever color you, you know, you 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 like really. Okay, we can we could just sort of hint it over to maybe sort of something like that. she's quite sort of light skinned anyway. Uh, so we can we can do that. I think I'm actually going to almost like monochrome, or I think just sort of think that might be the better way because I just want to get that green out. I think I'm just going to sort of take that, take the yellow down, take the green down. It's got to be green in there, isn't the yellow? The green there. Look. Let's take that green down, almost like just colour popper in in a in 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 a way, uh, and just sort of take that down, just give it that sort of uh, that 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 greyness of skin. I just sort of think it works better than that to than that than that green. Uh, but yeah, you know, just control the microphone, uh, do that, just a couple of layers, and just sort of, sort of trying to sort of control it. Oh, lovely that for bringing the detail back, isn't it? Okay, I think we've got room for a, maybe. Oh, that's a three in there. I was going to just have a look because we've got a couple of minutes left. I know Vince sort of said about uh, nine o'clock, so I'll just sort of try to finish at nine. So uh, look, I've got this oh, this Chrysler building. I said again, just about a little bit more detail uh, out of that. I think there's a lot more detail to come out of this without doing any detail extraction or, or, or anything like that. But let's just put a curves layer on this and let's just sort of see if we can just bring out. I'm going to pick up my black point here and just put in a, a black point okay so bring that black point in something like that and then uh, a white point maybe 
something like that. Okay, so hopefully that has uh, that has now just given us a bit more de a bit more detail in the building already. Okay, and what I can do, so let's make this a little bit bigger for you. What I can do now is just add in. So what we've done is we've split we split the the color the the the, um, the color bands in the background. Okay, we've done it automatically. I can just add some a little bit of sort of contrast into this sort of really lovely sort of soft curve going into that. Okay, don't want to sort of clip it or anything. Just my clipping down, but just a little bit more sort of texture in, into that. It's bound to sort of pick these blues up, which just don't let's not worry about that. So that's just got the contrast out of the building. It's just punched it out. Look. Okay, what we can do now is I will just now with a levels layer, just brighten that building up. So I'm not worried about the blue at the minute. I'm just going to brighten that back up a little bit. Just add a little bit in. We could just afford to come in just a little bit on the whites. Just, just offer that in a little bit, sort of something like that. I like that black in here. That's great. So now we've gone from that to that much more sort of pop uh, in that. The, what's it done to the sky? Let's have a look. Oh, yeah, sky's not so good. It's brought some cloud out, though, look. So what we can do is, again, with, the, with, 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 with that cloud, again, we could look at maybe a black and white layer on that. Just pop a black and white layer on and just go into luminosity blend mode. And, well, we know it's going to be blue, don't we? So you don't need to sort of tell us that it'll be blue in there. But, uh, you know, we can just move that. We can just darken that down or brighten that up or what, what, whatever we want to do. You know, we can just ease that. We'll take the cyans out of it a little bit. Drop the blue down a little bit. That's 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 okay. That gives us a bit more sort of, uh, a little bit more sort of um, detail in there, a bit of darkness as well. And then with hue and saturation, again, that's bound to be blue, isn't it? We know that. I can just ease that that, that blue off just so it doesn't have a, a, so much blue. We know there's some cyan in there, if you don't believe me. Look, you can sort of see it comes up grey there. Yeah. Just ease that cyan down with it, or it'll just uh, look a little bit sort of false. Don't need as much blue off as that. Uh, some something, something like that. Let me just check that levels layer again. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. And we just lift that that sort of center part up. So just with a few adjustment layers, you know, we can just really bring that out, really pop that out. Uh, it's just about polish. In images, that's what it is, and I think at that we probably around about nine o'clock. I would think there, Vince. Yes, we are, and it's now what one o'clock where you are in London? Yeah, one a.m. Yeah, Jonathan, uh, thank you so much, uh, people. If if anyone wants to uh, come off uh, mute and talk, uh, you're welcome to do so. Um, I'm so excited we had you do this as a prelude to. November um, and uh, the match your mastery of uh, Photoshop is staggering um, as I've witnessed over the last two months. Yeah. So. Yeah. I put you through the mill. I do apologize. <laughs> <laughs> so this was uh, quite a, a wonderful learning experience and those who missed it will have the recording to review it. So any questions, comments, anybody? Thank you, Jonathan. Good job. Outstanding. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Yeah, very helpful. Thank you. You're very welcome. We have some nice comments in the chat. Thank you. Learned so much. Thank you. Very personable style, sensitive, informative critiques. Lovely evening. Thank you so much. Um, right. An absolute I pleasure. Would say this to, is, I would say this was really honored to be asked. Thank you. Thank you. I would say this is probably our best. Um, uh, evening of uh, critiques so and and judging thank you Bob uh, you uh, you're on there any anything from your end sorry we were muted yeah uh, here's, yeah very, very good and I I like the Photoshop quick Photoshop lesson because I learned a lot. <laughs> and I can I can use a number of those techniques and uh, in something I just shot. So I'm going to go home and open Photoshop and step all night. So thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Luminosity, yes. Thank you very much. Uh, great, great critique. Uh, 
we we treat these critiques as a learning experience. So I keep telling everybody, keep keep the images coming because critiques are how we learn. Yep, they're tough sometimes, but that's how we learn and improve. So and I think they learn from everyone's images, which was the goal. So thank you, Jonathan. How, get a few hours sleep before you start again. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. Sorry. Good Thanks night. Very much, everyone. Good night. Good night.